It's Nana here, Tala Radio, Apple Music One, and I am joined by my very special guest, Subtract, live in the studio with me right now. Thank you so much for coming on the show and a huge congratulations on the new album, which is dropping this Friday, The Rat Road. How has the lead up to this album felt? It's been kind of a long process, I suppose. You know, my last record dropped in 2016, um, which was called Save Yourself, and um in that time in between i've kind of spent a lot of time i suppose working on production and stuff you know like and working out kind of what i wanted to present in the music industry or how i wanted to be presenting the music i was putting out yeah um so i suppose in one way um it's i've had a lot of time to prepare <laughs> but also in another way it's kind of come very quickly by the time i've kind of got to the place where i felt like i had a finished album and I was ready to put that out into the world. Yeah. Um, How long have you been working on this album in total? I think the earliest tracks were probably like six years ago. Wow. Um, obviously, the pandemic happened in the middle. So it kind of cut off a lot of the progress I was making, I suppose, or the speed of what I was trying to release at that time. Mm -hmm. I was spending a lot of time in LA, actually, like pre-pandemic. and writing a lot of stuff over there with other collaborators, um, mainly because... After my first and second album, I thought that I couldn't really find this the people I like I wanted to work with over here. The sort of really? I just felt like there was a a slight gap in the sort of like the voices I really was attracted to, or the kind of vibe, or that the ability to like work with people who just wanted to try different things. Yeah, and I was finding that weirdly people out in the states at that point in time were more open to like the challenge of doing something slightly left the way i work is generally i just go and sit in a studio and i'll jam stuff out with people mm -hmm. and i don't really like doing the whole sending beats to someone and see what happens my whole thing is like build rapport with someone and then though people might not see that it will be going on for, for a few years basically you know like a working together or sending like Love kind that. of collaborating Love that. um so yeah that it kind of unfortunately like stopped a lot of that happening so then I ended up with this two-year gap and I had to sort of reanalyze a little bit and go well the stuff I can't do remotely I'm now going to have to try and uh figure out with a different approach yeah and then I started discovering new people here and it kind of then sort of recatalyze what I wanted to create as well and bring more of a London framework back to my records love this because you've picked some real eclectic artists and definitely artists that I enjoy listening to and the type of artist that you can't really put into any kind of genre box. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. But I also thought about the track list and I listened to the artists on there and I was like, I feel like there's a story between, you know, all these yeah. different artists and how you've gone to Paris with Tori <laughs> yeah. You've like met George Riley somehow. And then obviously there's Sampha who you have known. Yep. How many years now? Oh my God, um, you guys go way back. Yeah, we met in like 2009, I think it was. Like, and then we're collaborating for like, two years before my first album dropped you know but because mm. we both lived in south london he was in morden and i was in tooting beck at the time um um i first got introduced to him as like someone who was trying to get into production <laughs> basically into being a producer and i was kind of like trying my thing you know obviously doing things in kind of electronic scene djing and like putting out 12s on various labels and stuff so yeah. i was kind of like mentoring in a sense and then i found out he sung because he played me some demos and things I'm like oh this is kind of crazy and amazing i obviously, wish i could have seen your reaction yeah. to hearing his voice i would have been but like, it was so oh. early on obviously these mm. were like very different to to kind of where he's now you know yeah. that term so like and we were just like hanging out like once a week for that two years you know just jamming things out and trying ideas i wanted to speak to you subtract about this company back because it has felt huge there's obviously the music there's the collaborations but there's the visuals the identity and the mask or well the unveiling of your identity and the mask being in the past <laughs> um why do you feel that this comeback has been so important and it was time to get rid of the mask i just felt that in 2023 the time was right to have more in a voice and an opinion and a point about my own identity within my own music mm -hmm. and not feeling like I was hiding away from that or creating a boundary between the listener and what those songs were about or meant to me personally or my the all the elements that come through within those songs too you know like just the way certain drums will sound will have reference points that hark back to a lot of my cultural heritage or things which I've grown up listening to and I felt like 
in the past, I've I spent a lot of time telling everyone that the focus on the music and the music will do the storytelling. And I still believe that kind of is mainly the 100% of the case, you know, that music should really be doing the work. You don't need to be selling it yeah. for it to have a point of view. But I also do feel like that it's missing the thing where I felt like I was not being able to tell half of that story. And other people then lost like this perception that you don't have a voice because you were hidden behind something. Mm. Um, secondary to that, I felt like within the last few years, there's been a lot of conversation about um, like kind of your ownership of your identity, I think, you know, and I'm mixed race, South Asian. And I think one of the things I realized is when I started out, this is kind of something that's, something I didn't really realize at the time was partly the reason I I created this persona and, and like reason for having anonymity was that prior to that point I couldn't really find myself in, like a place within the music industry or the scene at all you know there was very much like an essence of you weren't the right person for this space the minute I became anonymous and the minute I became like sending tracks out without anyone knowing I suddenly was able to infiltrate spaces that just wouldn't have accepted me before yeah um I think strangely that worked in a favor for me but it also worked in the point that I was just like I don't even know what his identity is it could be anyone <laughs> yeah I remember when we first met it was a, yeah. a festival yeah uh specifically for like electronic South Asian music mm -hmm. and like you said were like you were shocked to find out I couldn't when you believe got introduced. it so yeah. basically I uh we've spoken about Daldin on this show quite a lot because I will always big up Daldin and everything that's about but yeah it was I think it was the first ever Daldin festival we yeah. did and um our good friend I had a dream who's a producer and a DJ that we've supported a lot on this show. Um, I just remember him being like, Nana, this is Aaron. I said, so, hi, nice to meet you. And then he, Arhad looked at me and went, this is, no, this is Subtract. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> oh, wow. Someone who's listened to your music since I was very young. And I was like, that's awesome. And it's so interesting hearing you talk about how you felt when you were first coming into the industry with the with the mask, because, you know, I wonder how I would have felt back then knowing that you were South Asian because yeah. there was a reason, you know, everyone knows that I love MIA. Uh -huh. I'm a big fan of her and I love her music. But I think for me, when I was younger, it was seeing a brown girl on the TV. Yeah, absolutely. And I was like, wow, that's someone I can actually relate to in a in a different way, on a yeah. different level that doesn't exist. There's That's uh -huh. just not about. So then when I heard that you were unveiling the mask and, and putting your identity out there, I felt like a sense of, um, I was happy. But I could understand why you did it in the first place and what this chapter means. And that's why yeah. I was so excited to talk to you because there's a lot that comes with sharing your identity. But things yeah. like the fact that we were at a festival where we met and it was all the community there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of DJs that I knew, like Manara and people, but then also loads of DJs that I didn't know. Yeah. I was like, where have you lot all been? <laughs> like, this is amazing. Like, yeah. it really felt like a community coming together. Mm -hmm. And you, have you felt the difference since... I guess, being part of that community now? Absolutely. I think that um, it's been interesting. Although everyone, it works in very different spaces. You know, this is the thing. No one, there is no, I think, you know, back in the 90s, there was a whole Asian underground movement, but it was very much based around locality and a specific sound. Mm -hmm. I think that's the point of difference between that period in the 2010s where I feel like having I that identity was not really acceptable in a sense and it's a strange thing to even say yeah. but it just didn't feel like there was a place for me within that music industry to be like yeah it's me <laughs> like yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm not subtract kind of thing yeah. um whereas now um with social media with the uh things that have happened in the past like five years you know from Black Lives Matter movement to kind of people accepting that we should not tolerate you know any sort of prejudice or mm. racial discrimination in these situations younger people especially are very much like I'm going to talk up about this if this affects Absolutely. me yeah. I think I'm in that older generation possibly where we were just like no I'm going to keep my mouth shut so like I think there's a point now where I'm just like it's not it's not like it's not 100% why I do this but like it's part of the reason that it just enables me to be able to say more about myself but also at the same time frees me up from uh being misplaced or misjudged for who I might be or might not be you know I can actually say 
what my music is about, what I'm about, what I'm culturally from too, and how, like you say, that resonates with other people who want to see other representation within these spaces too you know 10 years ago that was a it was a bit of a different game and I think that right now things are definitely like like expanding and people have got a a wider look on on different people's sounds and their identity and you know just because I'm South Asian or I'm of color doesn't mean I represent yeah. Punjabi music like just mm-hmm. do you know I mean it's like I can do all this other stuff because I, I remember you know there's been some parties where we've had to put signs up saying like no song requests because I'm not DJing a set for people to come up to me and ask yeah. me to play some sort of Bollywood track, which I love, yeah. but it's not what I represent as an yeah. artist and as a DJ. And though it's those kind of boundaries that I think a lot of the younger generation are really, really trying to show like we do, mm-hmm. we do all these different yeah. things. But I wanted to speak to you a little bit about the Dalden after party. I was going to mention it earlier, but um, what happened because Skr- Skrillex had a Jalebi, that's what I remember. <laughs> and because I was running around that day, and then the next thing I know, you're playing the afters, you're on the decks. Yeah. Talk us through what happened there. <laughs> well, like, um, I have to put this down to, uh, to my wife, Neela, mm-hmm. who was basically the one who encouraged us to go down in the first place because she's like, we need to go and see what's going on, you know, and find out what's happening on the ground here. I didn't know Skrillex was going to be there, but I'd actually met him years before, like when I first started out. So I was like really surprising, but really cool to see him at this event, you mm-hmm. know, like hanging out. But yeah, so like by that point, I was just chatting about it and going, oh, well, you know, chatting to Ahad. And he goes, yeah, you should just play, you know? Why don't you do do a set? And I was just like thinking about this going, I haven't DJed in like four years at all. But, you know, um, I've been thinking about this thing of getting rid of a mask anyway, you know, mm-hmm. like and being more, pro- you know, present about myself. And then I was, and then was just thinking, well, Skrillex came along. He goes, yeah, well, this is the perfect time to do this. Yeah. You, know, you should be like playing tonight. I was like, okay, right. There's so many, so many people saying and then Jotty came along going, yeah, do it. Do it. Oh my God. <laughs> so no pressure, like, guys. <laughs> so like, I literally, yeah, just went on. And then Skrillex had gone home, mm. but then he found out I'd committed to it. And he, t- he came, came back. back. <laughs> I love that so much. Which is sick. And it was such a vibe, you know, and I'm I'm still hearing from people now who are like psyched about that that happened. So plans for this year, what are you feeling? Because I know a lot of artists, they, you know, the album's out, but they're working, Mm -hmm. looking into the future. You've been working on this album for so long. It may be out on Friday, but you've also like... 10 steps ahead looking at the next project I, or the next yeah I, I think one of the things that obviously is key for me i spent a very long time between this record and my previous one you mm. know um i don't really want to do that again yeah <laughs> i think um i'd like to be able to create more quickly and put things out in different spaces whether it's eps or singles mm. or just dropping things as collaboration projects with other people you yeah. know like i work with one person and we drop a full track ep like I had some, I did some interesting thing in the time in between, like I worked with Feist, like one artist and went out to like LA in that time and was, we wrote like seven songs together. Wow. You know, that was like a really interesting side project. I like was hanging with like Steve Lacey at one point, you know, things like that. I'd love to see these sort of things come into the real world at I some point. I'd love to hear that. Like, yeah, for sure. Um, Thank you so much for joining us today, Subtract. 